thinking about your preposition. And I've made up my mind. <laughs> and he will get to know you for who you really are. A lying, cheating, hope. <coughs> yeah, Lord. Do you really think you should be exploiting young women in your spare time? Regina, thanks a lot. That's it. Barely legal. Girls, did you hear that? Barely legal. That's the new name for the group. How you like that? Barely legal. We are barely legal. <laughs> Tonight on NTV. Street Live in association with We have fun time. Fun all the time. <laughs> Everyone you have a business and a massage on the end of the caravan, and I have got a business and a yambio cocuza van, a pack of van, a cocula, one now, back with the Vaza de business young and Yimidizao, Okuliandia Burundi, never Kaburundi, Kalenavana Vangave, a Galanga, one net at our way, eh, Kalera, the city will be business and Yimidizao and the Kumbi, Nakumari is a polot. We have fun time, fun all the time. And the change of government won't stop a thing. I've run out of fingers counting the number of multinationals setting up here. What about the three companies that announced their plans to launch last week? I say they're shortly. Me, I'd be looking to sell. At what price? More. Much, much more. I don't know who you are or how you know these things, but one thing I'm sure of, you're in the wrong job. Here, call me tomorrow at 9 o'clock in the morning. I'd like to hear more from you. Are you ready for your big break? The East African, understanding the region. NTV, turning on your world. Welcome to the program. This is NTV at One. My name is Malcolm Sima. Let's start straight away with the headlines. And NRM leaders in Rango District reject the party's yeah. resolution that endorsed yeah. President Museveni to stand as the sole candidate in 2016. We are constructing a new outpatient department. And also coming up, a facelift for Chiyandongo Hospital, one of the nine that will benefit from a $130 million World Bank loan. And the judge in Egypt sentences 683 people, including Muslim Brotherhood leader Muhammad Baldi, to death in a mass trial. This is NTV at one. NRM's Women League chairperson Jacqueline Bawazi has come under attack for failing to hold meetings since she was elected 
A group of Women's League from Bulamburi want her out of office. The chairperson of the Bulamburi Women's League, Betty Nenube, says the women have no information of events transpiring in the party from the national level. She spoke during the mobilization drive to popularize the Changkwanzi resolution. The district has already finished res consultations and they have agreed to endorse President Museveni as the sole candidate for 2016. We have never had any meeting. We are not having any meetings. We don't know what is happening in the country on women leagues. We, we don't know how we are going to look for votes now. We want her to at least call us for meetings. They tell, we know the problems which are there and we know how we can forego those problems as women and see how we can look for other votes for 2016. If possible, if she doesn't call us and they call us to vote her out, we are going to vote her out. As a women's league, with its leadership, you expect that uh, every leader has a role to play and therefore I should have expected the uh, leadership of that league to connect with the grassroots. But in the absence of that, uh, it's incumbent upon the NRM uh, office in our district to mobilize themselves, not to wait for other people to do mobilization or linking up with them. Government has begun renovating the Chuyandongo Hospital in Masindi with a five, 325 billion shillings loan from the World Bank. Eight other government hospitals will also be renovated and the funds. The development has come as a big relief to authorities at Chuyandongo Hospital who have gone for two decades without running water. We have more. Good. Chiriandongo Hospital is located along the Kampala Gulu Highway and has been in existence for close to 40 years. The hospital is meant to serve people from far flung areas like northern Uganda, but is shunned by many because of its poor facilities. The facility has had no running water for close to two decades and relies on a borehole in the vicinity to run its activities. And that one has made it very difficult for us to maintain the hygiene and the sanitation of the hospital. And most of our toilets here are all waterborne. We are waterborne. So we have had blockages of the sewage. These buckets serve as storage facilities for carrying out emergencies. So what we do, we are forced now to use PHC money to pay porters. And that you're not porters, exactly only one man getting water for all these departments. The hospital also lacks electricity and the authorities have to make do with solar power and flashlights to carry out crucial operations. It has not been uncommon to get mothers delivering in darkness here. The daily patient attendance stands at more than 200 but quite a number of them have to sleep on the floor due to the shortage of beds. Especially when it is rainy season. It is also not uncommon to get all beds filled up and people get the mattresses and put them down. Especially the pediatric ward. The situation has left many workers at the hospital demoralized, with others absconding from work. There are some serious cadres that were supposed to have, like a pharmacist. One who came here just reported and went away. <laughs> The government has embarked on revamping the hospital to improve the provision of health care services. A total of 5.6 million US dollars has been earmarked for the hospital's renovation. We have a funding from the World Bank worth about uh, 130 million US dollars and 70 million US dollars has been allocated for renovation of facilities across the country. Currently, since January, we started renovation of nine health facilities across the country, and these include one regional referral hospital, which is Moroto Regional Referral Hospital, and eight general hospitals. These are the district hospitals. Authorities at the hospital are optimistic that once the works are done, the hospital will be in position to offer up-to-date services. We expect actually uh, the morale is going to increase because now people will be working with water, constant electricity, because we're going to be provided with the uh, solar system also. That will go a long way 
to examine, to alleviate some of these problems. The works are expected to run for 18 months. The, some NRM party leaders in Rengo district have rejected the party's Changkwanzi resolution that unanimously endorsed President Museveni to stand as the sole candidate in the 2016 elections. And the result, resolution passed early this year has resulted in an intense mobilization campaign by MPs to popularize the president's 2016 bid. <laughs> The NRM caucus resolution that fronted President Museveni as the sole candidate for the 2016 polls continues to raise dissenting voices. NRM leaders in Rengo expressed their disagreement with the position. <laughs> It is very critical for senior members of NRM to amend the party's constitution first. Otherwise, we are likely to face a challenge like it was in 2011. But other leaders dismissed Sebelime's statement. We have agreed unanimously. We are running behind President Trump 7 come 2016. We shall look into several emails concerned. If need be, circle will sit and then we will necessarily inform NEC to do the amendment. In the other parts of the country, like Noya district, NRM supporters unanimously supported the resolution. NRM legislators are currently moving in their constituencies to popularize the resolution passed in February this year to have President Museveni stand as the sole candidate in the 2016 presidential elections. A man suspected to be a thief has been killed in an act of mob justice in Butayanja. Uh, Bushenyi village in Kavyuma Parish, Jitenga, Mubende district. A 22-year-old had been accused of stealing a bicycle, a solar panel, and a battery. The deceased is said to have stolen the items from a rooftop of one of the homes. The LC1 chairperson of the area, Siraja Sewanyana, says he had screams and alarms raised at about 3 a.m. He rushed at the scene and found residents beating up the suspected thief. When he attempted to rescue him, the locals turned on him and he ran to safety. Mm. Mm. He says the suspect had been accused before of robbery and had in fact been excommunicated. Maria Nyamiwa, the mother of the deceased, says she last set eyes on her son during the Easter season. The head of police CID in the district, Charles Ndamanyire, castigated the locals for resorting to mob justice. Hygiene remains an issue of concern as butcheries in Kampala continue to flout laid down regulations. Ari Namia moved around the city to check the cleanliness of some butcheries and now reports. These stalls are some of the busiest butcheries around Kampala. However, because of the poor cleanliness standards, the butchers here are not comfortable when they notice our roving cameras. The conditions here leave a lot to be desired, from the ones recommended by the Minister of Agriculture and the KCCA Public Health Department. We have arrested quite a number of people 
And uh, I think you've seen actually on the media where they showed people who are transporting meat on maybe in a car and the meat was actually, uh, it, it wasn't actually fit for human consumption. We took them to court, court find them. We have closed some butcheries in areas that are actually in hygienic. Members of the Kawempe butchery traders have been monitoring 169 butchers. Whereas some have made remarkable improvement, others are still lagging behind. Some of us are on a higher level than others. The KCCA Public Health Department want to roll out a hygiene sensitization program to butchers. Some of the regulations the health department plans to enforce include the approval of meat for sale by a licensed veterinary officer, meat should be kept behind glasses to avoid dust and flies, and a fridge for storage, among other things. The butcher himself should have been medically examined such that there aren't any conditions that may be transmitted through handling meat products. Unhygienic meat is dangerous for consumption. It could be contaminated with microbacteria that affects people's health, including food poisoning. Irene Namialo, NTV. Thank you, Irene. There's uh, many more stories coming up after these messages. This is NTV at One. Sensational cleaning and fragrance that lasts and lasts and lasts. Sunlight 2 in 1. Sensational cleaning and all day fragrance. Nice, you love me here too. Just relax. I want to come and check my baby. Madam, don't stress her, baby, just relax. You have nothing, nothing, nothing. Oh my God, this is my life every day. Can one midwife deliver five women at a go? This is a call on government to recruit more health workers, especially midwives, and ensure adequate staffing of health facilities. This message is brought to you by Uganda National Health Consumers Organization and Voices for Health Rights. Our contractors' all-risk policy covers your contract works, workers, equipment, and machinery for every unforeseen loss or damage. Let's shield your projects. Insurance Company of East Africa, ICEA, standing by you. Power theft can not only cause destruction of properties and power outages, but can also lead to death. And report power theft. It's a crime and affects everyone. Let's unite against power theft and save lives. Welcome back. Health experts in the coastal island of Zanzibar have significantly cut the prevalence of malaria over the past decade through a combination of interventions that have won its leaders lots of praise. Florence Narimba visited Zanzibar and has the second part of our malaria feature in this afternoon's Health Focus. Health Focus is brought to you by Uganda National Health Consumers Organization and Voices for Health Rights. Many patients in Zanzibar flock the Seblem Primary Health Care Unit for treatment every day. Women with their little ones in tow are a constant sight in this small center. Most of the children are under five years. The first impression one may get is that they are suffering from malaria, which is a wrong impression. While in Uganda, malaria easily attacks and kills children under five years of age, in Zanzibar, it's a different story altogether. It's rare to find a child under that age with this disease. In percentage malaria in children, approximately 
Statistics from a recent study put the prevalence rate of malaria at 0.03% for all age groups. We have some places to date for the last two years they have not reported a malaria case. The situation has actually changed in Zanzibar. It's now school pupils above five who occasionally get infected. We are trying to find out what are the reasons behind and we, we are also doing what we call the, the mosquito behavior monitoring. A visit to the main hospital in the pediatric ward attests to this. Some day, I think uh, six months ago, we had some cases, one case with malaria positive, but this case, this child came from Tanzania mainland. Malaria in Zanzibar is currently neither among the top five diseases, nor the top ten. Yet only eight years back, it was one of the top killer diseases. Even it leads some of doctors now, they start to forget how to treat malaria because it's not available. Malaria. But when they get in patient, they have treatment guidelines. And we use two drugs here, uh, artesanate and uh, ammonia cream, combination therapy. And uh, ammonia cream is uh, 10 mg per kilogram body weight and artesanate 4 mg per kilogram body weight. The SCT mostly used in Uganda is coartem. And the first line is a combination of artemetha and lumefantrin. And for severe malaria, we are using mostly we are using as first line artesunate, parenteral artesunate, meaning it has to be given intravenously. We have quinine, but we spare quinine. In our day, we use most of the time we use artemetha injection. Any co-infected patient? I ask. I don't remember. We don't have it. But why worry about co-infection when malaria is getting totally wiped out? Pregnant women are now a worrisome group to health experts in Zanzibar. But even then, only a few of them are reported. In February this year, the Antinental Department at Seblem Healthcare Unit recorded only two malaria cases. The number rose to four in March. The authorities at the Nazimoja Hospital are always checking slides at the malaria diagnosis unit, despite the low levels of the disease. Sometimes we collect up to 50 and they are not positive. And sometimes we'll close to 20 and you know, we get a positive one or two per day. He says that under five rate of positive is too low. This chart in the lab clearly shows the prevalence of malaria. For example, in January 2013, out of over 1,025 children examined under five, only one was found positive. In April and May, out of over 300 examined, none was positive. A far cry from Uganda where almost six are found positive out of every ten children you may see at a given time at the hospital. At the main hospital, they collect slides from other health facilities as well. But the main lab at Zanzibar Malaria Elimination Program, ZAMIP, takes the hospital slides as well as from health facilities across the country, including some from private ones, for further scrutiny. Kufanya quality control. So do you ever find a positive which is a negative? Uh, somehow, sometimes. The number of those detected with a parasite is very low in Zanzibar, which indicates a journey towards the elimination of the disease. On a yearly basis for the last five years, we are now having not more than five cases, five, I mean, sorry, five deaths reported at hospital levels. He, however, says the intervention has drained their resources. It's a process whereby a number of things need to be in place. Health, health system needs to be strengthened community roles to need to be defined clearly, and uh, many other factors. They still have quite a number of mosquitoes. Having a mosquito doesn't mean that you'll have a lot of malaria. It depends on the, on the stages of infectivity. In Uganda, however, there is a park district in northern Uganda known globally for having the highest number of infectious mosquitoes, with one person getting beaten by about 1,500 mosquitoes annually. The ongoing indoor residual spraying has helped in reducing them. The few patients found with malaria in Zanzibar are thoroughly followed up right from the hospital to their homes. One of their policies is to test all fever cases in the country, same as Uganda's. The issue of treating blindly is no longer accepted. Symptoms of malaria, as I mentioned, fever, headache, joint pains, general body weakness, they are vague symptoms. They are symptoms that a patient with any other disease can present with. The U.S. President's Malaria Initiative, started by President George Bush, as well as the Global Fund and other organizations like the Liverpool School of Tropical Medicine, greatly helped Zanzibar reduce malaria. What they consider a milestone, however, is the fact that they were among the very first few countries to use anti-malarials when they had first been introduced on the scene.
This contributed a lot to the cure rate of patients and decreased parastemia in the population. So what are you doing to ensure that you never have such a scourge occur again? Or is it something that you don't worry about? No, no, no. It is, <laughs> we do worry because there is also a risk of resurgence. You see, and usually when it resurges, it comes back with a vengeance, you see. It comes very severe because most of the children born now will have no immunity to malaria. Since the few identified malaria cases are imported from other countries, including Tanzania mainland, they would love to test everyone who comes in at all entry points. But it's a big undertaking which they're thinking of implementing in the future. For now, they continue to strengthen the existing WHO recommended measures, including use of nets, and continued surveillance of the methods in place. Florence Nalimba, NTV in Zanzibar. Health Focus is brought to you by Ganda National Health Consumers Organization and Voices for Health Rates. Thank you, Florence. And we learned that policy strategies need to be put in place to combat the infectious disease malaria and sub Saharan Africa. Now, let's have a look at what's happening in the international news. And an Egyptian court has sentenced 683 people including the Muslim Brotherhood uh, to death, uh, the leader Mohammed Badi inclusive, and evacuation of hundreds of Muslims from the Central African Republic's capital, Bong, triggers looting in abandoned areas. Egyptian court has sentenced 683 people, including Muslim Brotherhood leader Mohammed Badi to death. In a separate case, the same court also reversed 492 death sentences out of 529 it passed in March commuting most of the death sentences to life in prison. The AFP news agency reported Monday's hearing in the southern province of Minya comes amid a brutal crackdown on Morsi supporters and the Brotherhood since the military overthrew him last July. The court has come under the spotlight after the same judge in March sentenced the 529 defendants to death in just two sessions. The second batch, including Badi, had faced charges of the murder and attempted murder of several policemen during rioting by Morsi supporters in Minya on August 14th. And peacekeeping troops have escorted around 1,300 Muslims out of the Central African Republic's capital city, removing one of the last pockets of Muslims from Bangi in a nation torn apart by religious violence. Peacekeepers stood by on Sunday as Christians, some armed with machetes and bows and arrows, swarmed into and looted houses of Bangi's northern PK-12 neighborhood, which had been a Muslim district in the majority Christian south. Foreign troops have escorted thousands of Muslims to relative safety in the north of the Central African Republic. But some leaders fear that will make permanent divisions that have led to talk of petition after 18 months of conflict. Central African Republic's Minister for Reconciliation last week criticized the evacuations, warning that they would play into the hearts of Muslim rebels who want to create an independent state in the north. Auguste Bokanga, president of the URD party, which remained neutral in the conflict, echoed these concerns, calling on the 2,000 French and over 5,000 African peacekeepers to instead stick into their mandate of disarming the gunmen. Uspi Ropret, head of the local office of the International Organization for Migration, the UN agency involved in the evacuation, said Muslims living near the central mosque and the PK-5, another Bongi neighborhood, did not want to leave. That's it on NTV at one. But is it true what Jose Mourinho is saying that Chelsea has not tied to chance, even with two points behind Liverpool? That's what he said after beating Liverpool over the weekend. But that will be coming up on Omori. Dev Drummond said Aaron Darren and Dennis will be coming up with an all round uh, expert views on what's happening in the world of game. Have a good afternoon. <laughs>